Well, don't do that, Monjo. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Tanya Mulling Show here on the Barn Burner TV network on Zinco TV channel 250. You can download the Zinco TV app for any iOS or Android device and watch us on any smart TV from 2016 and up. And tonight I have the royal family of reggae Grammy Award winning group and my good friends Morgan Heritage is here. Bless up everybody, how are you doing? Hi, Tanya Mullings. Good evening. Hi, Tanya. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Well, we got, we got, I got to run it down. We got Una Morgan, Luke's Morgan, Gramps Morgan, Mojo Morgan, and Blanked Out, unfortunately, because in their bush, no <laughs> Wi Fi is Peter Morgan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, it's so good to see you guys, man. It's good to see you, Tanya. Oh, oh yes, trust me, trust me, trust me. Yes, yeah, so anyways, we have so much to talk about. We only have an hour. What you guys done in this industry, we'd need probably 10 hours to talk about or more. But um, first, we're going to start off with, I'd like to... Um, Big up, um, of course, Mojo, and I'd like to talk to Peter, or each one of you, really, about what you feel about what's going on right now. Like, first, we're here talking about COVID-19, and now, with everything else going on, Mojo, I saw you marching with your kids. It's like, yes. who would have thought that we would be doing this today? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's one of those surreal moments that very few people encounter within their lifetime. You hope you never have to take part in anything so um, impactful that, you know, people are dealing with on a daily basis, not just in America, not just in Canada, but, but across the globe. When you're talking about the need for systematic change, you talk about the need for reform within the protocols that the police uh, system has in place it's a real situation you know and it's not even a matter of training it's it's a matter of ethics and humanity it's not a black or white thing it's a good over evil thing and until we start to put these things in place and hold people accountable and take away that immunity that police officers seem to have in the united states that they there's a 50 50 chance if it's not on camera that they're going to get away with it so if that person dies, that's the other participant in the whole interaction, it's game over. So you find that as black people in the United States, we have to raise our kids different from, and, and the minorities are all the same, we have to raise our kids different from the way a white person would raise their kids. We have to give our kids certain guidance that a white person doesn't have to give their kids. And nobody should have to be going through that in 2020. Yeah. Well, you know what I was saying, a lot of people were saying that how can, and I feel this way too, how can a human being sit there and film these things when it's happening? And then I thought, if it's not filmed, mm. we get mad at the person for standing there. But if they didn't film this, we wouldn't know like what happened really. Yeah. And I think Very I true. one of our, yeah. our peers online say, it's not new. The only thing that's happening different is that it's being filmed. Exactly. I'm not saying if I was there and I, if, trust me, if I saw that going on, first thing I'd do is call 911. But the way things are going with police nowadays, what are they going to do? They're supposed to be here to serve and protect us, but that doesn't seem to be the case. It's a very serious situation. It's a very touchy situation. Very but, much so. And, and, and it shouldn't be. Nobody should fear speaking up on behalf of, of what's right versus what's wrong. And, and, and that's the sad part. When people do speak up and you see different people within your industry, different people within other industries speak out against you for speaking up on what you believe is right, it, 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 it really raises concerns on the morality of mankind today. And I believe yeah. we can get through this. I believe we can overcome. But it's only going to happen if we work together as, as humanity. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so how do you guys feel? Um, I know you guys are always, oh, I got to shout out Chronix. Chronix got it locked in. Chronix, oh, you know, big up Chronix. Um, yeah, 
our soldier. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, <laughs> how do you guys feel? I know you're home, everybody, you know, the touring is not happening because of COVID, but I think, um, correct me if I'm wrong, you guys, I think, are probably enjoying the time home with your families now because you don't get to have that because you're constantly on the road. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, one of the biggest things for me is that we were able to, to reconnect with our uh, younger brothers and sisters and our older brothers and sisters. We formed a WhatsApp group and now we're all talking and sharing pictures and and. and and just testimonies that we've all been through. And that's been one of the big, from Don't Have to Dread, uh, which was a, a, a big mega smash, uh, you know, 19 years ago, I think that song was released, or, or 21 years ago, I think it was in uh, 1999. Um, you yeah. find that this song, um, <clears throat> it changed our lives. Big up to Bobby Digital because um, we never really got no sleep after that. You know, it was just tour, 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 tour. <laughs> A couple of times, Yuna had a baby and she was able to take time and say, okay, I'm going to put in as a mom because it's different from others, as you know, Tanya Mullins. And 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 now yeah. it's, you know, we're able to have barbecues and roast two fish in the backyard. And, you know, I see Mojo in a swimming pool and he's working out with his families. And we didn't get, those little times were short bursts. It was like, you get to do that for two weeks or three weeks. Now... Yeah. <laughs> It's been a while. Our whole summer's been canceled. <laughs> yeah. It, 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 yeah. It's really something now that we get a chance to reconnect and, and I'm enjoying it, man. I'm I'm out, you know, you walk out into your living room and you're like, man, who are these people? Yeah. And you're like, oh, it's my kids. Oh, hi. You know? <laughs> yeah, I and, haven't seen you in a long time. You live here? <laughs> oh, it's it's so amazing, man. It's like the world just stopped, even there's no there's yeah. no entertainment, there's no distractions, no basketball games, just family. Yeah. And um, for my viewers who are uh, watching us right now, Peter Morgan is here. You'll be able to hear him, but you can't see him. Unfortunately, his Wi-Fi is uh, giving issues. So, Peter, who out of everybody, I think, is uh, missing the touring the most? Am I right to say, Peter? Say that again? Am I right to say the one missing the tour in the most is Peter? No, not necessarily. No. I mean, like Graham <laughs> said, I mean, we have so much years of touring, you know, that we've accomplished that, yeah. you know, a few months at home or taking a year off from the road is very much appreciated. Um, when the whole thing started, the whole quarantine, no one really knew how much you'd appreciate this time of just being home. You know, we look at it that way and say, you know, the government locked down the world. Yes, this is all our reality. But yeah. I think for, for mankind, uh, it, it, it was a chance for us to, to slow down. Yeah. Like hamsters on the wheel, just going, just going and always on to the next thing. And not really taking a chance to say, how oh, well live as humanity. <laughs> How I live as people. And that's why you see today is not just people in America protesting. The whole world are protests. Because now the whole yeah. world can look on the same issue at the same time and really look into itself and say, what we really are dealing with? You know what I mean? So it's not an American thing, it's not a UK thing, it's not a Chinese thing. I remember uh, probably two months before we were hearing about how the Chinese were treating the Africans the African immigrants from Africa in China. And that stir up a whole different thing in Africa, but people never really take it on as to say, you know, why the Chinese are treat Africans like this. But, you know, the whole thing with George Floyd and what happened with the police in America, like I heard one of these news anchors said it, uh, today, um, it's like the camel that, the straw that brought camels back. So it's, it, it's, it's an opportunity for the world to ease off of the partying and ease off of the drinking and the, 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 the nightlife and the, the, the concert going and really focus on the, the real issues at hand, which is humanity and how we're living on this planet together as human beings. You know what I mean? So I, I really appreciate what's going on, not for my sake, but even for our children and our grandchildren's future. You know, the, yeah, this moment of pause and awakening, it's important for humanity. 
so true, so true. So I, I got Una here, Luke Morgan again, Gramps Morgan, Mojo Morgan, that was Peter Morgan, uh, Royal Family of Reggae. I'm like, good friends, you guys don't even know I'm talking to you, but I feel like this is not an interview, it's a reasoning. The truth. <laughs> <laughs> Most definitely. Most definitely. Yes, yes, yes. And you can't, Yuna, again, I haven't seen you since everything happened, and it's a blessing again to see you. I keep smiling every time I see your face right now. Yes. Um, let's talk about, um, like, you guys a little bit, because you guys probably been through this a lot, but the history of when you started. First off, you have to, I have to shout out Danny and then Roy Morgan, of course. Oh, yes. Shout out to, you know, we can't left out Daddy. I have to shout him out. Big up to um, Taurus Riley. Yeah, I'm on. Yes. Um, Taurus Riley, big up. Yeah, man, big up, big up. Um, Let's talk about when you started, because of course, uh, um, let me see, Luke's, let's talk to Luke's because Luke's doesn't <laughs> talk as much. We're going, we're going to talk to Luke's about how everything started in the beginning and we'll go off to, I know I met you guys at Sunsplash 1992. That's when we met. Mm -hmm. So we can start, if you have the story before that, anything you want to um, tell before you reach Sunsplash, uh, let my- uh, Well, we started out as kids. I was growing up in the school, going up, watching oh our, our father, rehearse and stuff. And, you know, as going to school, we used to always do like the talent shows, perform at the library where we went to school and stuff like that, building up our chops and performing for 12 Tribe and all that. And then in 1992, that's where we got Sunsplash. We did Beach, beach Party and then um, Lee Jaffe Sauce and then yeah. worked out with Sharon Burke and um sun splash at the time for us to perform again international night and that's where we had got signed right off the stage with mca we did miracle from there and then we got that a was release the first album we, that was the first album with mca yeah. then we got a release from them and then we went to jamaica that is say you want go home and we we just said that we are follow you we are come at jamaica too and that's where the the journey began where we you know god bless bobby digital king jammies bobby resting soul in peace you know and um dennis howard brought us to bobby and king jammies and it just started from there then you had you know that's where it all began for us and our lives changed from that moment when we met bobby digital and it just began from there till you know what was it 10 albums we did together um, wow to 10 albums and you know the journey, the history is there for what it is now. You know, after all these years, we finally won a Grammy. We give thanks and praise, our first one. Um, and then, you know, it is where we are today, stuck in our COVID, you know, everybody doing what we can do to stay sane and stay happy and enjoy the time with family. Yes, I, that's the same year I met Bobby as well, down there, 1992. And I want to take this time, because we're talking about Bobby Digital, may he rest in peace. Each one of you tell, if you could tell a story or a memory. I know Gramps' story, man. We were, we were talking about that in New York when he did his album release. He was telling everybody about stories about climbing a mango tree. I'll let him tell the story. But each one of you, I'd just like to, a memory of being with Bobby and, and what he's done for you. Go ahead, Gramps. <laughs> Well, well, my fondest memory <clears throat> was th that's the biggest point of, of, of humility, you know what I mean? Because we are some kids coming from New York. So, um, we knew the energy, but our pace was very fast because we we're coming from New York City. So everything was like, get to the studio, boom, you know. And Bobby was like, easy, man. <laughs> you know? And, and we were driving all the way from St. Thomas. At that time, it was an hour and a half drive to come from St. Thomas. So when we got there, it was like, okay, let's get to work, Bobby. You know, at the time, we recorded on the Kete drum rhythm, and that was out. And he said, you know, come through and start with some more recording. Um, And then it was like, it was like an energy, Tanya, with, with, after we drive on the road and we got to the studio and say, yeah, I want to go up and climb and pick some Aki over the studio. <laughs> and if you've ever been to Bobby Digital Studio, you know <laughs> that there's an Aki tree over the studio. Yeah. And that's what we had to do. He said, go get some Aki. And he said, I think it was me and Peter that we went down <laughs> the road to go get 
I think it was three pound of salt fish and five pound of flour. And then we came back, cooked the food, and then Bobby looked at us and said, no, we're ready to make some music. And, yeah. and what, I, what I learned from that is that it, reggae music is not about a hype and the best singer and the best musician and the best drummer and keyboard player and guitar player. It's about a vibe. It's about a vibration. And that was the biggest lesson because we were doing music before we came to Jamaica. So it wasn't that we all of a sudden learned to do music, but it was an energy, the Jamaican way, that organic yeah. reggae music, it's a pulse. And that's the biggest thing I learned out of it. Simple. It's a simple story, but it just shows you the simple things you can learn out of life, out of a pata, aki, and salvage. Trust me, I thought he was, I, I know the tree because I was laughing too, because I said, well, at least when I was down there, I said, at least me not happy climbing the tree, but me can yam the food. <laughs> <laughs> but you are in the joke, I was laughing, Peter. I was laughing because I was thinking of myself the other day, you guys climbing the mango tree and all this Bobby boat, yeah, pick up yeah, mango. And I said, and then it, it, it seemed like he might groom you from them days to go for the mango challenge now with Richie Stevens. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I was saying that is so entertaining. I said to Richie the other day, he just posted something about the mango challenge. Yeah, and I said, unfair. I said, unfair start because they're not all in the right place to start the <laughs> challenge. False start. You have to start again on the next date. I yeah, think, I'm not sure if we got, we lost Yuna. I hope that she joins us back. I don't know where she went, but we seem to lost. We lost her. I don't know where she went. But hopefully she joins back again. Yeah. Um, Peter, are you still there? Oh, I'm Peter. here, Tanya. I'm here. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Hi. So let me let me go to uh, Peter on a memory of Bobby. Bobby. Bobby, man, there's there's so much memories that Bobby may rest in peace. You know, Bobby to us is like our big brother. You know, when we went to Jamaica and you know, like Luke said, Dennis Howard. Um, by the way of our father hooked us up with Bobby Digital and King Jammies. Working with King Jammies was like working with our father because he and my father is like brothers. And when we worked with Bobby, it was like working with our older brother. You know, it wasn't like working with our father. Jammies is like a father to Bobby is like a brother. So there's a whole lot of things that we, 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 we experienced with Bobby that, you know, we, sometimes we'd end up at the studio and Bobby would say, um, we could go drive or eat some fish at Helsha or Port Royal and then come back at the studio. Just different things, you know, and Bobby always, it's like him always want to break bread. Always want to break bread with you because like Graham says, a vibe is an energy. And you know, when a Jamaica, one of the nicest things is when a man say, oh, I can run a boat, which means yeah. they can cook a pot of food and everybody eat out of the one pot. You know, yeah. and it's the same energy, the same vibration. So people are coming from different places across the island and then when we come together it's a it's most important to make sure everyone is on one accord before um you get started um one of the greatest things where we learned from bobby our greatest fun our, one of our fondest memories is creating the music from scratch and one of the things with jam is what we going to going to jam is was like going to boot camp because like Jamie said, if you are coming to reggae, you have to pass through King Jamie's studio. So yeah. what we did was we end up singing on rhythms that we grew up hearing Frankie Paul sing pan. We, grew, we yeah. sing pan rhythm where we hear Cocotty sing pan, Admiral Bailey. So you, you went through the middle of, of Jamie's catalog with Bobby Digital. Now Bobby created fresh new music that was modern heritage music. Um, the only other person that probably shared some of our rhythms to, together was Miguel, which was um, Sizzler, because at, at that time, Morgan Heritage and Sizzler was two artists that Bobby was working with on a constant level when you're talking about making albums. You know what I mean? So learning how to create from scratch, just building a rhythm and firehousing at the studio, Dean Fraser there at the studio, Dalton Brown at the studio, and just seeing these great legends and musicians that we grew up seeing come through New York performing with, with, with Sizzler and Luciana, or earlier than that, 
when Dean Fraser and them man used to throw with Dennis Brown. And our father used to carry us to the Dennis Brown concert in New York or when Gregory Isaac came into town. You know what I mean? So being in Jamaica and working with the legends, because of Bobby, Bobby brought these people in the studio that helped to mold Morgan Heritage and create that sound for Morgan Heritage, that Morgan Heritage have a sound today in a reggae music. When you hear a Morgan Heritage song or an or a intro, you know it says a Morgan Heritage tune. And those are the memories that stick with me with Bobby. Um, is Yuna still here? I think we lost Yuna again. I saw it on pause and I, I hope she again joins us again. Um, Luke's, uh, mm -hmm. what is your fond memory of Bobby? Um, just like what Pete and Graham said, you know, um, one of the things that I did like about Bobby was how creative he was with getting that sound that he captured in that room. I think that that's one of the things that made um, make Jamaica what it is, you know, um, it's like you have, as they would have said, like you have like the lesser inferior um, equipment and stuff, and yet it's competing with the bigger studios and firing and, and whatever, and just to see, you know, how he must be able to do that. And, you know, he's just a master at what he did, you know, and, you know, as, Peter and Graham say, you know, the, 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 the breaking bread and then cutting music, it's a different energy. You know what I mean? It, it may help us to find our sound, help us create our sound, and we have been given credit for that. Okay. I think we, Yuna, Yuna, your fond memory of um, Bobby. Man, I tell you, there, there's so many, Tanya. There's I know. So I can imagine. Many. And I think one of the things that I really loved about Bobby Digital is that he treated us as his children. He treated us as his little brothers and his little sister. And like Graham said, one of the big things that shocked me was when we are come from that speed there, America, you go into the studio, the studio is booked, it's time to work. And when you hear Brits go climb hockey tree, I go down the road to go buy a flow up a dumpling. I, 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 I. <laughs> we're, we're not to interrupt you when Mojo just wanted McDonald's, right, Mojo? You know, so that's not good. <laughs> when Mojo just wanted McDonald's. Just wanted McDonald's. Up the <laughs> there, was, there was no McDonald's there. <laughs> it was going on my life's road, no Mojo. Thing. There was nothing. <laughs> <laughs> You know, T Tanya, Bobby Digital, he made such a mark in our lives. Trust me. That when him passed on, it sent a shock with the Morgan heritage. It, 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 sent, it sent a wave of an energy. It wasn't, it was just like, woof. And it made us see and remember and reflect, at least for me, all that we went through and all that we have gone through. Like Lugie said, we reach the point now where we have Grammy and so now we're labeled as legends, child, I don't know about all that. But all of what I do know. <laughs> you are legends, you are legends. Man, to God be the glory. I, yes. I know that I remember the love that Bobby shared with us and how he made us feel comfortable. And he didn't make us feel alien. He didn't make us feel like we're some Yankee youth that come from America. I tried the reggae music. He embraced with him, love with him, and said, Giddy youth, them a chance. You know, he made, he, made me feel, he made me feel special too. Being the only girl with the boys, he always gave me a, a special look. Of, Come moms, come moms. And that always makes me feel good. You know, being with my brothers all these years to have people that work with us that that don't treat me different, treat me like one of the boys, but at the same time have a, a, a look of comfort different because I am a woman. That, that is, you can't buy that. So Baba Digital rest in power and peace. Yeah. Um, Mojo, your fond memory of Bobby. Um, to narrow it down, difficult. I would have to say overall, the playfulness that we would walk into the studio, right? And in our session, and 
you have to understand growing up as a youth in a water house, the tension where you have to hold is not a jokey jokey type of you know environment. It's very mm-hmm. different from the suburbs in Springfield, Massachusetts. Um similar to the rats and the roaches that we grew up with in Brooklyn, New York, because we had the experience of that as well as the nicer lifestyle, you know, getting our education in Massachusetts. But you th- that hardness that the Jamaican ghetto gives the music that comes out that we know as reggae um, is very special. And you can look, you know, Panama and Fias and know say, if you mess around, you will get hurt. So yeah. Bobby's a man where, you know, he might always have him screw and, you know, and the moment <laughs> we walked in, we saw that smile. He, he was able to be playful with us. I mean, yeah. the only time Bobby would, I can't say Bobby, ever get vexed with me, was with me about Miss we walk at the studio about Miss Play. Mojo, come on. Come on, come on, tell us to win that, no, Bridget. You know? So, it, it's... When, when, when we got mm. that news, like you said, you know, it's like somebody thumping at your belly. If you ever get the wind knock out of you, you know what that feel like. Like, I couldn't breathe. Peter called me and I'm like, I couldn't breathe. And then mm-hmm. I spoke to Craigie, G. Arkham, son, and I was holding it, you know, trying to be strong. But the moment I heard Craigie's voice, I remember I said Craigie and Tootie, they were kids going to primary. Not, not primary school, but we knew them. We always knew that. The legacy Bobby was working for him said, I believe something for Craig. Yeah. You never know if Craig had to come in, a, come get the music or anything, but we always have to leave something for Craig. And, yeah. you know, when, when we hear Craig advice that morning, it was just like tears just started to flow because it was just, it was surreal. It was, it was, you know, very similar to when we found out Kobe that we didn't know Kobe, but he had that impact on people's lives where if you didn't know him, you were impacted by what he represented. And Bobby Digital has, he changed. He, he, he was very instrumental in changing the sound of reggae music. Yeah. From, from the, 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 the rhythms that were happening in the 80s to what it became in the 90s. And then the partnership with us, we were responsible for the resurgence of live music on a larger scale because the elders like Burning Spear and Third World never stop doing live music. Culture, Joseph Hill, they never stopped doing live music out of Jamaica, but it wasn't on a large scale. You know, yeah. and Sly and in Drum Machine, he, he was the hardest working programmer in Jamaican music. And after Don't Have Dread album, when we go over Grove Studio, which is a studio um, behind Irie FM, and we cut that first session, when that album dropped, not only did it change our lives, but it changed recording studios forever in a Jamaica. Everybody start lick out them walls and, and them bathrooms to put it in a live room. And, you know, without Bobby, it wouldn't have been possible. I mean, we don't know. Morgan Heritage was, we were who we were when we when we met Bobby, but who we are today, we're not sure if we would be the same Morgan Heritage without Bobby. That's a fact. It's That's so true. Fact. It's so true. I, I think I covered everybody about Bobby. Did I? Did I miss any of you? No. no. You got us all. Okay. Like, I'll just say my fond memories because I didn't really speak about it either. Um, 1992, I met Bobby and he gave me my big tune, Real Rock, on the Real Rock Radium Love Thing. And um, the weirdest thing, guys, today, I got tagged today from Japan on that tune and I put it in my story and I said, that is a vibes this morning. Wow. And um, mm. uh, Bobby went on to produce Music Is My Life, uh, four tracks on that one and he dedicated, he produced a track I dedicated to my dad, Carl Mullings who passed away. And I said, what's the odds of Bobby giving me the hit tune then doing four tracks and doing the dedication to my father and dad and him, I don't know if you guys know that, dad and my dad and Bobby share the same birthday. But, oh, wow. wow, didn't know yeah. that. Yeah, they do. Wow. March 11th. And um, 
one thing I can say, I met so many people up at Bobby Studio, as you guys did. I met Garnet Silk there, like everybody you can think of. And even though I met you guys in 92, I think the next time I did see you, if it wasn't in the States at the Tomiko Wars, we were rehearsing at your house. Um, I saw you in yeah. between on tour, but the next time I did see you, when um, what I love, and I have to say this to Peter, I've never said it before, is I took time off, came to Jamaica, and again, walked into Bobby's studio, and who was there? You guys, and I hadn't seen you for years, and you said, well, Lord, great to see you, Tanya, you're doing your thing, and you, know, you all knew I took a break with the children and stuff, and Peter looked at me and said, when are you going to do the duet? Let's do the duet, and I said, I'm ready, <laughs> and that, you know? I said, I'm ready. And I want to thank you guys because you guys are all about family and just you producing me on that track and putting it on my album. And I feel like you guys just put me back where I left off with that collaboration. And I thank you so much. You know, Peter's there. He say you want to give me credit for writing, but no, I don't know how you do it. You just, you're like so quick with the writing and everything. And then Mojo laying down the vocals. <laughs> He's so, I don't know how he comes up with lyrics so fast and it's all love this. And, you know, I know it's rootsy lyrics and everything, but he's so fast. I've never seen that. I'm like, you know, how do you do that? But um, <laughs> Gramps, Mojo, I appreciate you guys for that. And one thing, um, my father absolutely loved you guys. And I go back to the same thing, 1992. Dad did see you on Sunsplash as well. And I remember him sitting there with your dad and he's like, what? Them you that bud, them have to go up on the big stage. Oh, you mean because we were both on the same show, and he was saying that I remember um the dreads opening up, and I I was just mm -hmm. watching them. I'm like, oh my god, how cute are those two? You know. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember your sisters also dancing. I I forgot the name of the group. Chipettes. They were called Chipettes. the Chipettes. The Chipettes. Yeah. So, you know, and that those of you who don't know um, the dreads, uh, it's LMS now. It was then now. They were left. It was Shaipu, right? And Laza and, yep. mm -hmm. and sister Miriam. And then they went on to LMS. So I just wanted to say publicly thank you guys for that. I know you guys probably don't see anything big about what you did. But for me, I thank you for that collaboration. And, you know, that I can say I worked with you guys and I feel blessed. Thank you. Oh, thank you're you. welcome. You're so <laughs> welcome, Tanya. You are a sister. You know that. I know. I know. I know. I know. Years. Yeah. I stayed up at the house there when me and Peter wrote it. And I said, to everybody, I got to tell these stories because they're just funny. Got up in the morning. Mojo was there. I think Peter was. And, and then Grant. And you guys had that trainer there. You yeah. That? Jill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I get up and I'm like, train. You know, I don't, especially when I go to Jamaica, I'm so hot. I can't even think about working out, you know, the body's hot and everything. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, we got to go voice. You guys go and voice it down at Big Yard. We did the vocal. And I'm thinking, Gramp got me standing up against the wall. My legs shaking. I was so out of shape. Even Mojo didn't, Mojo, Mojo didn't like the working out either, really. <laughs> yeah, you have to put it in the I know. But you like me. I'm like, oh, man. So. Why I brought that up is because it was funny because when I got to the studio, I used to say all the time, when Peter said, let's do the duet, I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to sound like the man and you're going to sound like the girl because I got that low voice. And I said, if I did not work out the way on or kill me that morning, I would have never hit those notes I hit. <laughs> so, so you guys, I can thank you for giving me the bus in the tail, you know? Oh my God, it was too funny. But I remember them times there back then you guys had the album um, that had, I was playing it over and over again because I, I think I actually took it from Dalton Brownie. Let's make up. Yeah. That, that, was, that was Protect Us Jado. That was yeah. Protect oh. Us Jado. Yeah, that was, the, that was the first album we did with Bobby. That, yeah. that tune there, that tune, oh my God, I was playing it at home. I mean, my dad loves you, but I was playing it to the point. My dad said, you not play any other song on the album or you just dip on that track there. <laughs> it, was like, it was like on repeat. It was too funny. And Gramps, we actually, when we heard the news of Bobby, um, I think it was, I don't think Gramps went live right away, but he did a live and he draw out Luke's funny live. Yeah. <laughs> Luke's Luke fun live. And, um, he said, I just tuned in. I did not know 
Gramps was doing any live. I just watching, you know, his quarantine thing in the, and he said, T, come live. And I was like, my eyes were like, I can't tell you. I know how you guys felt. I felt the same way because when I lost my father, it was like mm -hmm. a kick in the gun. And that's how I felt about Bobby because I'm so appreciative of what he did for my career because I still have that song till today. You know, that's right. I, you must know how that is. And I said, you put me on the ass grams. My face was mush up, no makeup. Eyes looked like somebody beat me up. And I yeah. said, no, this is, I don't care. This is how I look. It's real and it's real. And man, he's missed. Man, he is so missed. Amen. Mm. Yes. He is so missed. Yes. Yeah, so, mm. so. What's going on now? I like I just feel like, oh my gosh, I'm we're talking about certain things and I just get overwhelmed with um it's just nice to see you guys, all of you. Well only the, you the newest do thing this. is Gram Gramps Gramps just dropped a new single, which is so beautiful. Well we, we people we, like we, us. Who's talking? Is it Peter? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, you know what? You can talk about that, but we're gonna tell you a story about that. Graham, go ahead, Peter. No, nah, I mean, I mean, I was just saying that, you know, because you said what's new and, you know, Grams just did the song the other day and hit us up and like, yo, I, I, I did the song because our, not only did Bobby pass, but our uncle, our father's brother passed like a, a week or two weeks before Bobby. Yeah. You know, and uncle our inspiration. David? Yeah, Uncle David. So I've like, reached Grams and he, he just recorded the song that blew us all away. And, you know, he's like, Grams, this is bigger than just I know it's for Bobby and, and uncle, but this yeah. is for the world, man, you know, and, and, and here we have it today. And the song is bringing so much healing to so many different people, you know, Grams can't talk more about it. But can I say something before Grams talks about that? Grams, I mean, I've been playing it two weeks on the radio show. I closed off my show both weeks with the song. And when you guys say, you say people like you. Yeah. You guys. Morgan Heritage, it's people like you. You guys Thank give you. selflessly to the world. Thank you. And I want to say publicly that you guys yeah. have introduced so much talent to the world that people, I mean, in where they come from, um, they probably <laughs> are known. But I met so many people that I would have never known if it wasn't for you guys. Hmm. Yeah, you embrace them. Um, the you gift dance. Them, you know? You guys, I know you guys just do it. And that's why you guys are where you are today. You are so humble. You are so giving. And I, I, I'm, I'm saying this and I'm, I'm trying to express myself because you know what they say all the time? Give me Marie before me dead. True. True. I'm saying this publicly. You guys are a blessing to us. You really are. Your thanks. Your thanks. Give thanks. Thank you, Tanya. And like I you said, don't make me cry, girl. Don't make me cry right now. Mm -hmm. You know me and you will start, eh? But yeah, it, <laughs> from long time. Don't bother me with you. Safi, Safi over here. I don't care. So many times, I can't help it. Like even Gramps, hold it together with, you know, I know I'm trying to be when Bobby passed, you know, <laughs> trying to be strong. He says, see, I'm trying to be strong, but I can't tell no lie. I messed up, you know? But yeah. it, it's, it is what it is. And I mean, you guys are just, a blessing, a blessing to everybody to know you. And I, 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 this interview is for you, but I just want to use the time all the time to express how I feel because even it's like, I'm a vibes person. And it was weird. Even when my dad passed, you guys came to town that weekend. And yep. it was just the weird. You remember? And I thought to myself, how is it you guys come there? And I, I remember being at home and I think I talked to Gramps and I was like talking on the phone, like, and you guys encouraged me to come out. And Steve said, you know, yeah, I'll take you there. At first, I didn't even want to leave the house. But I was so glad that I went. And I went and watched you guys thing because I needed you guys. And you were here at the time that I needed you. And you didn't even realize you were there for me. But you were. Praise God. You're blessed. You're blessed. Oh, man, that's when and, you hear and, stories like that, that to, to tell you the truth, Tanya. <laughs> you know, it, the, the, this journey that we've been on as Morgan Heritage has not been an easy one, you know? I know it. I know it, girl. And, and to hear a, 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 
a woman of your stature coming from the background that you come from as a media person. And I know you don't just speak from yourself, you speak on behalf of a lot of other journalists or, or disc jocks that you hear. We say thank you humbly, you know, because I and I know the calling what I and I get and we give God thanks, we give the most high thanks for, for what he has given us. And we pray that now that Miss Corona doing her thing and Miss, Mr. Miss COVID doing her thing, and Ray Ray, after them do them thing, the world I got to see some more things. I don't know what, but we have some more for, for the world. So continue for pray for I and I, Tanya, as we pray for you and your family. And thank you so much again for your words of strength, encouragement, and upliftment. Thank you, Tanya. God bless Bye. you. I love you guys. It's just like here too. When I heard about what had happened with Bobby right away, I said to Gramps, we got to do this. This is our way of, you know, coming together. And I know they're watching us up there. They're watching. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah. it's our way of letting the world know, because I don't think uh, right away when I spoke to Gramps, I was like, I don't know about how strong you guys are, but I know I couldn't really talk about it at first on camera like we are doing right now. But I said, there's no way this can't pass. And we sit down right here how we're doing and not express how Bobby was a big part of you guys. And I'm, I'm glad that I got the chance to be the one to do that, you know, with you guys. Yeah, I'll tell you one thing, you're making history because this has not happened in, I don't know how long. So congratulations to you. <laughs> that's what i meant you know that's it's true. like first when i thought about it i'm thinking to myself i wasn't really thinking about that but i thought yes you guys haven't been like on a platform together in so long yeah but yes. it's like when i posted it i asked gramps like how you want to do this because you know media out there as soon as you post a picture of all five of you oh they must be back together again you know yeah so yeah. i said how do you want to post the three or you know and tag luke and Yuna or and then i yeah. thought no we well, they were it. so excited. I, 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 they were so excited, man. Like when I went on my live, like you said, and me and Luke's was yeah. talking about him getting the best girl on that video shoot. Yeah. <laughs> Jealous <laughs> till his day. My two, let's make up. Uh, hey, Tanya, I'm still jealous till this day. Luke's got the best girl on the video <laughs> shoot. <laughs> so, so for, for, you know, when I told Yuna and and and, and uh, Luke's and and Peter and Mojo, there was a site. You know, like you said, everybody's really enjoying themselves, enjoying them family. Nobody's like really want to do interviews and. And yeah, I, I'm thing, but they said it's Tanya Mullins. We got to do it. Yuna was like, "That's my girl, honey." <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's funny though. You know, as much as you guys say that, you I can draw you guys out, and it's funny here in Canada. I don't go much places, but when you guys to come to town, I'm there. It's yeah, like man. True, true, true. You no, know, because people don't realize. You know, it, it's it's a reason. It's a catch up thing because it's like family. Yeah. It's not. A, of course, I enjoy watching you guys perform. Are you kidding me? Of course, I like that. But it's just to catch up, and it's just that vibe. And I'm I'm not going to tell you no lie. It's like when I see you guys, it motivates me to do better right. at whatever I'm lacking at, you know? All right, all right, all right. Why? All right, all right, all right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. So we were talking about Grant's new single, but we're going to go back to other stuff. But I, I just want to say, I'm going to show you guys how the world is so small. Gramps tells me about this single and I look and I'm like, who produced it? Johnny Reed. Johnny Reed comes from Grantham, right where I live here. Um, and Johnny and I were inducted in 2015, the same time we got our star together. Isn't What's the odds of that? Yeah, that's amazing. Crazy. Yeah. That's amazing. My yeah. world. As soon as uh, Johnny, like I know Grants was saying that I mentioned that to him and then he talked to Johnny, Johnny linked me up and he goes, Miss Mullins, long time. It was just so funny. So I mm. said, the world is a small place. Small, small world, man. Mm. Right? It's people like you. Are we still, do we have Peter here still? I'm here, I'm here. Okay, I'm just saying that everybody who's... A, um, tuned in. We have Mojo Morgan, Luke's Morgan, Una Morgan, Graphs Morgan. You can't see Peter Morgan, but he's here. Um, I'm here. Yeah, Live I'm and direct, baby. Because they don't see you on the screen, so we got to let them know you're here. Sure. So, 
Um, what else we're going to talk? What one would you say? Okay, I'm going to ask somebody something because you you guys worked with a, a lot of people on collaborations and so forth. Yeah. But I'm going to go one by one and ask who would you like to work with collab wise who you haven't worked with? Gramps. Oh, wow. That's a, that's a, that's a good one. Um, what genre or any genre? Can I say anything? My, Either even producer and artists or band. Any any one of those. Uh, Quincy Jones. I would I love to have work with Quincy Jones. Um, it's not too late, Quincy, if you're watching. Um, <laughs> well, I just think no. he's, he's a monster of a producer, and he understands music the way Morgan Heritage interprets it. You know, yeah. because Morgan Heritage is a melting pot of music, and that's what makes. Um, I think we have a, a different sound within reggae music. You know, Luke's him loving Bujo Bantan and, 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 and like, he's, he's a Bujo <laughs> fan, right? And then you got Mojo that likes the Cranberries, which is a rock group, you know? Yeah. And then you know with the Whitney Houston and then Peter with the R&B king with, with, yeah. with, you know, bands like Shy and Troop and Guy. And, and then you got me that love off the original Frankie Paul, Admiral Bailey, Shabba Ranks and, uh, James Ingram and listening to a uh, little bit of Lucky Dubé. So we're like a melting, we're like the United Nations of music within our band itself. So Quincy Jones is, has that kind, as a producer, he's well known. And I think we would bring something different to him because he never done a reggae track before. And as an artist, uh, I don't think we and Sizzla ever um, really worked on a project together. He's sung on a song for us called, um, I think it was Senorita <laughs> Remix with, with Bone to Killer. And I, I think I would love to do a project with Sizzla Kalanji, uh, like a, a eight songs and eight songs. I think that would be brilliant. Okay. Um, I just want to put it out there, Eduardo, if you're watching, if you can extend this, I would absolutely love you. I'm just putting it out there. Send me a message if possible. Yuna, who would you like to work with? You know, Graham Sequincy, and I, I definitely... I, I, Quincy Jones is someone that I, I, I've had the, the, the biggest dreams of working with as Morgan Heritage, because like Graham said, he understands music. He understands the science of music. And the other one that I really like that I, I think would actually kind of get what we're doing is Kanye West. Oh. Yeah. You know, there's this, I feel that Kanye, excuse me, is, is a musical genius. And, and, and I think there's so much more. When somebody like that signed John Legend and then on Estelle and, and, and then what he does, even his first album, The Graduation, those first albums, when I hear the musical content of it, I'm like, wow, I think he could get it. I mean, Quincy, Kanye as a, as a, new, up to, as a more, you know, modern day producer, that's what comes off the top of my head, you know that I would love to, to work with us as a group. Okay, uh, I think we got about seven minutes left. I put it out there, but it seems like there's a, a show after, coming up after, so we only probably have less than 10 minutes. Luke's? Um, Quincy was the first one that came to mind, like um, that would be, and if he, if, you know, Michael Jackson, I mean, Michael Jackson is the epitome of an artist. When you, yeah. you think about, I mean, the perfection, everything, it would, Michael Jackson, if okay. we ever had that chance. Mojo, Mr. Mojo. <laughs> Where'd Mr. Mojo go? Mr. Mojo, done mute me. Are you hearing me, Mojo? <laughs> Gotta come back to Mojo. Peter? Uh, I, I would have to say Stephen Marley. Ah. to do a project with Morgan Heritage because people don't really understand how amazing Steve is as a producer. I've worked with Steve as a producer, work with Jay Book. And okay. every time I'm working with Steve, you know, as, as with, with other artists like Jay Book, me and me, we've done several songs with him on his upcoming album. And I'm in the studio, I'm like, we need, we need to do a project with Steve, man, because he's, him have a brain there when it comes to music and some music him have in him catalog yeah. with people 
don't even understand how talented Stephen Marley is. Incredible. And I think with Amag and Heritage um, co-producing that album, our, our EP with Stephen Marley at the helm, with our ideas and do we mojo programs and you know they, they they're both eclectic like that, you know like you know says I can't, but I would see like Stephen and and a Morgan Heritage together would give you that kind of synergy that 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 kind of fire that or flair, you know. Yeah. He's he's an amazing 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 producer, and I have I have dreams of working doing a project with him. All right, nice. Um, I just want to say, I, like, I don't want it to get cut off on me. I want to mention quickly, Yuna, you did Evolution and your solo project you, you're working yeah. on. Yes, 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 yes. Had to, the Miss Corona came in and, you know, put it on a pause. But, you know, every so much has happened in 2020 that got, the most high is really good because he's revealing all new things and setting the things so it for go right. You know, like Graham said earlier, each one of us have something different for bring. And that song was what I needed to put on paper, what I needed to write, what I had yeah. went through. And I pray that I'll, whoever heard it and whoever does hear it feels the same way, that feels that they have some evolving to do, some changing to do, some growing up to do for final, to find the I am within yourself. So much love to everybody that heard the record. And thank you, Katanya, for the love that you gave it. I love you yeah. so much. Evolution. Evolution. Yes. And <laughs> any one of you, yes, any one of you want to um, address the Africa, the foundation you have in Africa? Where's Mojo? Mojo dropped off, unfortunately. I think we lost. Oh, he's there. He's there. Um, in Kenya, Kenya, Africa. Yeah. <laughs> I'm here. Oh, Peter's mute. I don't know who's addressing it. Do you guys have a? I, the... I think I think Mojo has bad uh, signal. Mojo's signal are going in and out. Yeah. Yeah, man. You see it. You see it. Manata yeah. bought me. Oh. So not only oh. Peter. Peter's not the only one in the bush. Mojo, come out of the bush. <laughs> now work out for him. Now work out for him. Now I'm going for him right now. Okay. Yes, so um, I didn't get somebody to address that, the foundation. Um, oh, no talking to you. Oh. I'm not hearing him. Term, term, term. Yeah, yeah man, that's terrible. gone. Uh, <laughs> No blood, no, that gun, <laughs> yeah. internet, internet, squeeze your mojo. So, you know what? Let's run down, follow Morgan Heritage at Morgan Heritage, of course. Yes. Um, again, Gramps Morgan, people like you, go get the new single, follow him on Instagram at Gramps Morgan, go buy that now, support the music. Una Morgan at Una Morgan, Evolution. Luke's great. Luke Luke's, Luke's got his, say your Instagram again, because I know you got a little. Luke's Morgan MH. MH. And now, yes. like you've been branched out a long time doing the management for Grammy Award winning, um, Grammy nominated group, Rage and Fire. And who else? Um, I'm, I'm now into booking, um, talent booking. I book um, Taurus last tour in the U.S. and Alba Rosie last tour in the U.S. Um, so. Nice. Yeah, yeah. And Mojo Morgan, are you back? Are right, you... All right, all right. All right, all right. You in the dark. <laughs> we can't see you. <laughs> and Peter. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, we going we gonna to just wait for that collaboration and that works with Stephen Marley because I feel it's going to happen. I oh, feel man. it's going to happen Jowie. too. I feel yep. it's Jowie, happen. You know? What you put out in the universe comes right back at you, honey. True, true. Definitely. That's a fact. That's yep. a fact. So Mojo, Mojo, follow Mojo at Mojo Morgan. You guys, I cannot say thank you enough. It's 10 to 10 now. I, again, one minute left. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you, Tanya. Thank you, Tanya. Thank you.
God love you. It's the Tanya Mulling Show right here on the Barn Burner TV Network, Cinco TV, Channel 250. Thank you so much for locking us in. Catch you next week. Take care. Yes. Bye, darling. <laughs>